Okay, now, the second time. Yeah, I've just come off um, a call, a video call, with uh, another member of the community, which is actually quite um, quite a nice call. Um, Chris, aka Haskell Plus, first time actually speaking to him. Um, right, yeah. So we spoke about his call to action, 2020 uh, community call to action uh, forum post. Uh, and in it, we spoke about a bunch of things. So I've just got a um, uh, a few notes on here that I've um, written. I'm just gonna touch on just to sort of highlight and um, summarize our conversation, hopefully. Uh, so one of the first things I wrote down, obviously beside the call, he just sort of like. Um, reiterated what uh, his post was alluding to or pointed to talking about um, which is this idea that you know folks uh, within the community basically like everyone from economists legal experts environmentalists mathematicians philanthropists historians etc are needed basically professionals to um, weighing on the direction that we want Cardano to move in. Um, so far the community is actually quite diverse from a sort of um, national standpoint. So, you know, like a bunch of um, different languages are spoken. Um, people are located in a nice kind of dispersed way-ish, um, a little bit. Um, I think that can improve or uh, increase that will be an interesting conversation to have um, I think it can be tied back to a key takeaway or my key current um, gripe um, with the way things are sort of going on but we don't actually know so in a way that kind of superficial um, diversity we, we, we know about or we're aware of um, beyond that I feel like actually what what we need is to understand the depth you know so pointing to what Chris was talking about like understanding what people's you know superpower expertise is because once it comes to actually like voting and stuff you know uh, with the liquid democracy when you're delegating your, your vote you're delegating it to someone who you want to actually know and understand that they have domain expertise in something and have a particular perspective which um, you think will really be key in terms of forming um, a well-informed decision uh, on a particular vote or on a particular issue right um, One of the key things that Chris brought up was the amount that the incentivized testnet so far has, the amount of money that has been accrued, which is going to be going to the treasury, is a lot of money. And obviously that money is going to be going to improving the community in sort of like many different ways. Um, and at the moment, like that money most likely over the next year or two sort of nav price so to speak or the fund the, the base price of ADA is most likely going to increase and with it that sort of pot of money in the treasury that we have to fund different um, different stuff so with that sort of building up it makes sense for us to get to a point where we are better positioned to actually allocate this money to you know back out to the community to be able to actually then you know, in return, gain benefit by the things that people have, you know, built, etc. Um, yeah, and at the moment, I think it's estimated that the incentivized testnet, uh, the ITN, on 900 million ADA or four million dollars US dollars, um, have actually uh, come from that. 
and yeah moving further that the money that chances are that's going to just keep increasing it might be that it won't just be like this sort of honeypot which will be more of a liability than an asset um, so it not it might not be that we need to actually um, get ourselves in a position to spend a lot of that money um, so that you know we're able to you know gain stuff back from the community but actually um, it might be a situation like now where this pandemic has shown that the companies which actually had a decent amount of savings like Apple for example um, were really well positioned or ha now are really um, in a enviable position because they do not have to um, seek governments to bail them out or you know be desperate for um, additional capital or, you know anything like that so you know then they're not in a yeah compromised um, position so it might be that th again that might be something worth um, exploring um, yeah so one of the key things I just wrote down in terms of uh, one of the possible um, ways to to sort of solve or start to attack this um, issue of community engagement is through the ambassadors and sort of defining and distilling the process of how one of of what it is what it means to be an ambassador, um, how you become one, what it means to be one when you are one. Uh, what is expected of you, etc. Because I mean, in a way, like this conversation has been taking place, I think, for more than a year, and we actually haven't got to a point where we're having a proper conversation about um, how this needs to happen, right? Anyway. Uh, so ambassadors is a thing. Um, I'm hoping again to make a video uh, on that. Uh, just expanding um, all the questions which I feel unanswered and maybe suggesting ways that we can move forward. Um, retaining our values, um, you know, of decentralization and accountability. Um, the other thing that we spoke about is vol Voltaire, right? Again, going back to voting and how you know, vo you know, the voice and having OHK as the technical um, uh, what's the word um, arm of the three legs. <laughs> uh, what's the word? Um, contractor. That's what. Um, and how, you know, we are sort of, you know, nearing the end of their first or of their tenure, and it feels like the handing over of the button, so to speak, is actually not happening. I feel like there's sort of like a somewhat arrogant. perspective which is you know um, assuming that they're just going to automatically get to be the ones that the community want um, in place moving forward um, which I don't think is particularly the case especially if what if you're able to create like a really good foundation of like okay here's what it looks like uh, here's what the criteria that we should use as a guiding um, force or guiding point uh, to choose who the next contractors are going to be and what is going to be expected of them. One of the key things is sort of you know the um, the expenditure, right? One of the key things that I feel like again this is something that I brought up, which is so it's weird that you know it being IHK being a private entity but yet serving this of open source public community the number of things which need to be um, uh, communicated one of those things is um, how the, the expenditure basically um, and 
what it has cost and how long it took to do certain things. One interesting thing here is, you know, because we do not know how much it's going to cost, even how long the next term should be, because it feels kind of arbitrary that, or it, was it, is it five years or is it four years? I'm not sure. You know, to actually determine how long we should have, um, you know, a technical um, contractor. Uh, yeah, we spoke, spoke a bit uh, about conflict of interest and the sort of m murky nature of that. Um, spoke about KPIs again internally, like things which are not um, uh, exposed. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, for lack of a better word, exposed um, to the wider community by this public entity, uh, private entity, sorry. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, just have conversations about, like, again, a distillation of what the three entities do uh, and moving forward, what's going to be expected of them kind of thing um, and what it looks like, you know, to sort of rethink what those three entities um, do or who the people are within those three entities and what power the community has and the ways to actually <clears throat> execute that um, to find sort of rot one of the key things actually here one of the key learnings is the Michael Parsons controversy right moving forward how do we have the community accountable not just these individuals who um, were being paid to be within the Karana Foundation you know, having them in there with a conflict of interest and with sort of little accountability um, or motivation to say expose certain wrongdoings. Um, yeah. Anyway, so one of the key things actually I think would be interesting to do is to have a look at the roadmap. Have a look at the roadmap from twenty twenty. Or from like was it 2017 all the way to uh 2020 or even maybe further back to uh, i think was it maybe 2015 or 2016 when the research began um and then obviously uh, the f uh, federated mainnet started was it september 2017 you know to now we're about to decentralize um it would be interesting to actually have a conversation about what it took that you know within that roadmap and you know maybe because you know sometimes it costs a lot to start something and then not so much moving forward um but to actually have an understanding of that and to have a active conversation um with the community uh, about what it took to actually get to this point and what we will need for the next however many uh however long the next duration needs to be because it might be that actually what we need to do is structure it in a way where yeah we might be sort of subcontracting stuff right where you have a main entity in place technically to sort of facilitate the long-term say five-year plan but the teams who then come in say maybe over six months or a year to execute particular things then you know are not the same people who are just in there for the next five years right so it might be you know sort of um devolving it in that way um where the capital is able to be efficiently actually allocated um and accountable so yeah the roadmap thing i think is an interesting thing that would make sense to um explore and just like visualize and say okay this has happened then okay um now moving forward what what's it going to look like and that is going to then influence who we then vote for to take us forward even if it's ihk how do they move forward differently than they did before because before one could argue that oh the, you know, there's no technically there's no way for the community to actually like 
have a vote or have a say in these things but now actually there is with Voltaire if that's I'm joking once Voltaire is actually there um, yeah so road map da, da, da. so one of the other things I should or two the last two things to to talk about is uh, well quickly feeling disincentivized uh, I'm curious within the community at any point has someone felt disincentivized to actually contribute or to engage um, and for them to actually just state like you know in a forum like okay actually yeah I had this particular experience or you know and da, da, da. so for example like I've had a number uh, the latest one is actually requesting uh, for some sort of common repository where um, the stats of the ITN are posted so that I can be able to like make visualizations or infographics um, from them right to inform the community uh, you know and also just I suppose um, for accountability and I feel like whilst actually I haven't I, that's the thing like this should be the role of CF right one should not ha be required to have the technical know-how to then go into say um, uh, what is it thingy pools um, pool.io is it pool.io um, you know to then find such data and then you know that data should be like oh hey, here's a you know CVS or CSV um, yeah here's an Excel or a spreadsheet form a formatted um, thing of the data um, from the pool so far and then even after that like um, you know here's stuff once we are fully decentralized here's stuff um, from you know the last week or the last month so that you know other people can then come in and have a look at that data in the same way um, data COVID or Wuhan virus data is actually being sort of communicated it's, it's in sort of universal standard um, data formats uh, yeah so disincentivized I think that would be an interesting thing to um, to look at uh, and then in closing um, the K K factor you know so K in the context of um, the pools or the number of pools you know it was arrived at that around at around a thousand pools um, it makes sense from a decentralization standpoint uh, that a thousand pools would equal um, a good sort of healthy um, decentralized amount okay that makes sense but my argument is at the moment the limiting factor is not the quality of a pool because to me the quality of a pool does not just equal oh you have um, command li uh, command line um, knowledge you know you're able to kill it on terminal like it's a lot more it's communication it's presentation it's um, mission vision like w what is your cause like what are you presenting uh, you know to the community why should people delegate to your pool like all these as aspects I feel like are lacking but then the way to change that is to without affecting security right limit the barriers to entry in terms of creating a visual um, a graphical user interface that would enable more people to actually create stake pools, right? Because more people who have broader skills should then be able to engage. Um, and this wouldn't then actually particularly um, affect the 1,000, you know, the K 1,000 um, pools. Because what happens, I brought actually a good reference here, which is to um, like the FTSE 100. For example that doesn't particularly mean that there's only 100 companies in the world no it means that that's a particular number um, 
that is a threshold obviously there's a lot more right and but then you have to be within that threshold to be able to count as that so it's the same thing here where we would have you know a thousand pools um where in the same way we've got a saturation point um within a pool right if you've got a certain amount of uh stake delegated to you and you go past a certain threshold saturation point um your rewards are then affected right so we should then have an even wider um saturation point which is beyond the 1000 pool right if your pool is not within the thousand your rewards are affected right if you're within you know because that's what at the moment is good that number is dynamic it might change in in, in, in the future but Again, it's just creating this dynamic element, uh, which is similar to the saturation point within pools, which is which already exists. And what I feel will happen then is the force, the limiting factor changes, and there's a forcing factor towards quality, quality not just from a creative, you know, um, vision, mission, um, perspective, but also technically right we go away from these pools which are basically on centralized infrastructure majority of them i'd argue you know on aws and you know digital ocean to people with raspberry pis desperate in desperate like p places right like in the middle of nowhere in a desert or in you know um the arctic or wherever people being you know where there's a small community and a you know network connectivity someone being able to run a node right i gave an example of you know someone in the village somewhere which uh, a, a remote village you know it goes up to say a shopkeeper um who he buys his daily you know stuff from food etc this person runs a node and this person accepts ada do we want to be in a position where there's a lot more of that right where this customer who's come to him and bought stuff from is like oh you know what oh you have you have a pool um i'm going to delegate to you right because i know you i know the cause that you stand for i want to actually contribute to our local community compared to oh i'm forced to delegate to someone who's in a different country um or even arguably say in the same country but is utilizing hardware which is elsewhere but you're not like within my community like this rural area that i'm in like who are you going to delegate to given the given the choice and given like knowing what it is that we want to achieve here in terms of the values decentralization um accessibility uh financial um self you know self sovereignty financial um liberation you want to go away from limiting factors which make the ecosystem centralized right and closer to um decentralization so this is my whole thing like the more i talk about it actually i'm able to have a, a, a clearer perspective on what exactly it is i'm trying to articulate here um so i'm just going to yeah try and distill it down um you know visually and you know more concisely and present it in a way where i think people will be able to see and be like huh okay wait so you mean just creating this little graphical user interface experience user experience would mean that we have a lot more of a you know better chance to be a healthy environment because otherwise we're just eos basically <laughs> you know um yeah so yeah that's that i'll just keep talking until it's 25 um i think that's the longest video i've recorded so far i'm curious to see uh, how large of a size it's going to be but anyway yeah so that's a, that's the whole thing it was a good conversation um first of many to come i hope with chris and other community members it was a shame that i was not able to record it but I've learned from it and I think the next one I'll be able to, you know, I'll be in a better position to record. It's between, the issue I'm still having is actually being able to get audio from a browser window. So I'm going to be running a few tests to basically try and figure that out. Um, 
Yeah, and we were to actually record it, so next one's probably going to be live.